Hi and welcome back to the channel. This is number four of the Halloween movie reviews and it is a personal favourite of mine. So it's 1957's Night of the Demon, directed by the great Jacques Tourneur and starring Dana Andrews, Peggy Cummins and Niall McGuinness. In America it was known as Curse of the Demon. They wanted to cut it shorter so they could make it a second feature in a double feature which is a real shame because I can't think of a movie from 1957 that I like more. And if you're gonna watch this movie, you wanna go with the British version because the British version runs 95 minutes and the American version cut down runs 83 minutes. And they take out a couple of uh, subplots. And I think that uh, having seen them both and the copy of it that I have has both versions. And I know this because I have the version that has both versions, which is this one. This is an American version from about 10 years ago. And it's got the American version and it's got the English version. So you can compare and contrast them. And trust me on this one, the English version is superior. I like the subplots. I like visiting the family of one of the victims of the villain in a very rundown country cottage. And it kind of works. Now, the story is fairly simple. A scientist called John Holden, played by Dana Andrews, is traveling from America to England to be in a conference, basically debunking the supernatural. One of the things he and the other scientists involved are going to do is debunk the claims of a cult leader called Julian Carswell, played brilliantly by Niall McGuinness, who runs a satanic cult. And an aeroplane is just passing, so I've got to wait for that to go away. Which is really funny because there are some scenes in an aeroplane in the movie at the start where there's a meet cute between the niece of one of the scientists, played by Peggy Cummins, and Dana Andrews' John Holden. One of the other scientists is killed mysteriously by Julian Carswell using magic. He writes a rune on a piece of paper and gives it to the scientist. The rune then leaps into a fire and is destroyed and Carswell tells the scientist that he has several days to live, at which time he is going to be ripped apart by a giant demon. Now, in both versions of the movie, we see the giant demon. There's a lot of controversy around whether they should have shown the demon or not, or left it ambiguous as to whether the magic Carswell uses actually works. But having thought about it, and having seen this movie a few times over the years, I like the fact that the demon is there. It's um, a little bit puppety at times, but there wasn't the technology to be able to give us a lot smoother um, evocation of the demon than this movie has, but uh, it kind of works in context. And once you accept it, it's um, very useful to see exactly what Carswell is conjuring and how he is doing it. Dana Andrews is kind of okay as the protagonist, John Holden, who slowly realizes that magic is real and that his rationalist point of view is maybe not the whole picture. And so he's like an American rationalist scientist going up against a villain who is created and acted and written in a really interesting way. Julian Carswell, for me, is one of the most interesting villains in movies because he doesn't do what a lot of other villains do. He's avuncular, he's friendly, he's polite, he has, lives with his mum. I'd like to meet my mother. You must try a homemade ice cream. She's very proud of it. In a very large castle that's been provided to him by his supporters. And he, you know, he's a slightly portly, bald man who used to be a stage magician and uh, did a clown magic act, which he does for the local children at a Halloween party. There's that old thing about the banality of evil. Carswell is a kind of demonstration of the mildness of evil at times. The Carswell shows us that evil is often quite mild appearing and not as we see in many, many horror movies, a kind of raving maniac. There's not a moment when the villain raises his voice in this movie. Maybe you're a good loser. I'm not, you know. Not a bit. When he threatens, he threatens in a very kind of conversational tone. He is evil and yet there are a couple of scenes in the extended version that show us that the deal he has made to gain these powers is one that he would take back if he could he really has got in over his head he knows it and yet he has to persist in trying to 
deal with the people who are threatening his wealth and his power over his cult. So we've got a very three-dimensional villain for a 1950s kind of movie. And I like that. I think that Niall McGuinness is brilliant in this. Really interesting actor, Niall McGuinness. Did some work in movies. He was also in another movie called The Kremlin Letter, which is a very good late 60s spy movie. And in between movie gigs, he worked as a general practitioner. He was actually a doctor who also turned out to be a fantastic character actor. And I kind of like that duality there. There are other doctor actors around and they're always kind of interesting when they act because they've got a real life experience that they can use to inform their art. And that really works in the case of Niall McGuinness. His Carswell is one of a kind. There is nothing at all like him in any other movie I can think of. Now, the movie having been directed by Jacques Tonneur, who worked in the 1940s in Val Luton's unit at uh, RKO Pictures. If you haven't seen Cap People or I Walk With a Zombie, you really should check out the RKO movies that Val Luton did with Jacques Tonneur, or Jacques Tonneur did with Val Luton in the 1940s, just after RKO had the big financial fiasco of Citizen Kane, they decided to rebrand in a sense and put out a whole bunch of low-budget horror movies, a lot of which were directed by Jacques Tourneur. He was a master at using shadow and inference and indirect scares. There's a scene in the movie where Holden is attacked by a minor demon, as Carswell puts it, which is a cat that turns into a leopard. And you see a lot of it in shadow, but it really works well. There are also moments where, as Carswell says, Holden is going to start experiencing a mental disintegration. And we see some point of view shots from Holden's point of view where the scenery is kind of rippling slightly. There's something slightly disturbing and slightly out of sync about the world he is seeing. And it really does build up the suspense in a wonderful way. But where does imagination end and reality begin? What is this twilight, this half-world of the mind that you profess to know so much about? How can we differentiate between the powers of darkness and the powers of the mind? Now, there's a new edition of this that's just been put out by Cinema Cult, and I'm waiting on a copy of that one because I wanted a Blu-ray edition of the movie and to see if there are any extras that I don't have on this one. Uh, and if you really want to watch this movie, I, I recommend you get anything you've got with the extras or like this one with the alternate versions. I think it's really interesting to compare and contrast the two and just see what's missing from the 83 minute American version. You really want to make sure you see the UK version for the simple reason that you want to see the movie the way the movie makers originally intended it and not the way the money men cut it again for their own reasons. Movies have a, a natural length, and the people who create them cut them to that length. But just to summarise, and I'll go back to my notes again, see, I've still got some notes. Just to summarise, I love the fact that this movie is about a rational man who is, through no fault of his own, dropped into a demon-haunted world. A world of ancient manuscripts with ancient forgotten knowledge in them, which can bring another world into our own and destroy human beings. That's kind of a cool concept. And it's one with which we're familiar from Lovecraft adaptations and a whole bunch of other stuff. This movie was based on Casting the Runes, a story by Modigu R. James, which predates Lovecraft and has had a number of different adaptations over the years. But this, for me, is the definitive adaptation of the story. I think it works as cinema. It works as not high-budget filmmaking, using resources and using kind of subtle shadowy things to evoke a world where reality is changing or is being changed by the influence of a man with ancient knowledge. I really love the way that they make the world porous to another world and that just works incredibly well. There are also a couple of jump scares in it which is not a problem for me because pretty much Jacques Tonneur and Val Luton created the jump scare with the bus scene in Cat People. So you've got that there and uh, a couple of nice jump scares in this one. Nothing that's going to make you shit yourself, but enough to make you giggle a little bit after they happen. By the way, the um, production design is interesting too. It's done by Ken Adam, who 
went on to do the production design for many of the early James Bond films. So the sets are wonderful and the location shooting, part of which is shot in the library of the British Museum, really does work. And there's also a scene where Holden walks around Stonehenge, uh, which kind of adds to the mystery and adds to the supernatural ambience of this film. And then, of course, we've got Carswell, the, the perfect villain for the perfect 1950s horror movie. I can't overstate how much I love Night of the Demon. Curse of the Demon's kind of like the castrated version of the movie, I suppose. So you really want to go with a full version of it and enjoy the experience. It is definitely, if you're a horror fan, a movie you must see. Anyway, that's it this time around. Thank you very much for watching. As usual, you can support the channel at patreon.com slash paleocinema. And if you found this useful and fun to watch, you can always subscribe and hit the like button and the notification bell. So anyway, take care of yourselves, follow the science, wear a mask, watch some good movies, watch some bad movies, watch any Jacques Tourneur or Val Luton movie you can. You're going to thank me for it. And I'll catch you next time.